Hi there, it's Luke here once again for the M5 Stack official channel. In this week's video, we're going to be looking at a new sensor, the hole sensor. Now, a hole sensor is a pretty common sensor. It basically detects if a magnet is near to the sensor. So we're going to be using this particular sensor to create a smart burglar alarm. Essentially, we can put it near to a window in the proximity of a magnet, then when the window opens, it'll detect that the magnet is no longer close to it. It sounds a little bit simple, but what we're going to do is to use a service called IFTT to link it up to the internet, and then we can receive a message on our phone or an email. All we need is a magnet, an M5 stack device, such as a core or fire, and the whole sensor. Once the sensor is triggered, we'll receive a notification on our phone. Let's see first how we can set up the IFTT service and then set up the blocks in UI Flow. Let's get started. First up, we'll need to go ahead to ifttt.com and go ahead and make an account. We'll need to enter our email or you can sign up with Facebook or Google. We'll need to set a password and then we're pretty much started. We can skip this and then we need to go ahead and create an applet. So the, how this works is first we create an if. So the if that we're going to create is a webhook. Essentially when a HTTP request is sent to our site with our particular key, it will then trigger whatever we wish it to. So receive a web request, yes, connect. Then we need to give our event a name. So in my case, I'm going to call it open window. So now that we've done that part, we need then to add the notification part. So we can either choose to send an email or notification. And then if we have the IFTTT app installed on our phone, we'll get a push notification. And we can just simply choose this one on the left if we don't want anything fancy. And then hit connect. Notice for the IFTTT app, you'll need to be also signed into your account in the app. Here we can customize the message. The event name will stay as what you stated in the last page. So in my case, open window. So that's pretty much set up. All we need to do is press continue now, finish. So here you can add the number of your phone to link the IFTT app, or as I said, you can sign in on the phone. Now we go to our app event, click on the webhooks, and then click documentation. Now we'll get our specific key, which is unique to us. And here is the URL that we'll need to copy and paste into UI flow. Notice the event here as I mentioned earlier, will be the same as you stated earlier on. Mine was open window, also minus the brackets here. Now I've copied that URL, we can go into UI flow. Now we'll get started with a simple test in UI flow. As usual, make sure you have the latest firmware installed on your core, UI Flow 1.6.3 at this point. Now we need to first go into the Easy IO pins. You would think that we would add a unit, but unfortunately, if you look in here, you'll notice that there isn't a whole sensor unit. Perhaps that will be something added later. But since the whole sensor unit is very simple, we literally just need to do a digital read. 
So here we go. And here we need to pick the third one down, digital read. And we'll set up a loop so we can continuously check the state of that pin. And then I'm going to read the value of the pin to the screen. So we'll drag a label in here and then put this in here. Now the technically the whole sensor unit should work in most of the ports uh, as I thought it was a typical digital sensor. However, there's apparently multiple switches which may trigger different voltages in the device. Therefore, it needs to be plugged into a pin with an ADC. So we will be using pin 36 if you're using the core device. If you are using a fire or go, you need to make sure that it's plugged into port B or the black port. So once we've set that up, we can run that on the device. And you'll notice here that we get a one to start off with. And then if we drag the mag magnet over the spot where the sensor is, you'll notice the little LED will come on and this one changes to a zero. So since we're going to be connecting this up to a window and having them sat next to each other, our close state will be when the pin is set to zero and when the magnet is removed, we'll set to one. So bearing that in mind, we can now set the sensor up in the window like so using this program to test. Make sure that you have the magnet facing the, the correct side as it does matter which polarity it is. You can have a quick test of this, flip the magnet around and see if it changes from zero to one. If it doesn't, then the magnet is on the wrong pole. So just keep that in mind. And first I'm just gonna tape this magnet up with the correct side facing away from the window with a little bit of tape. And then I will tape in the sensor into the corner of the window and then make sure that the magnet is contacting the unit so that I'm getting a constant zero on the screen and the little LED is lighting up. So now that's set up, we can go in and do the more advanced code now. We'll keep this label here just to make sure we have a readout so it's good for debugging, but we'll need to go into the advanced blocks and select network. And here we need to enter in our network name. And password. Then therefore, if we download the code to the device, that every time it boots up, that it will make sure to check for the network and password name first. Okay, so next. We'll go into the loop and we need uh, an if block from the logic blocks. Okay, so um, logic again, and then we'll enter the value. So remember it's zero if the magnet is attached, one if it's not attached. So once that is triggered, and then we need to do a HTTP request to the IFTT webhooks service. So we'll use this block here and then we need to paste that URL that we got from IFTT. It has our key there at the end. And then if we go back, we can see that our event name is here, minus the brackets, make sure they're not there. And then generally here you would put the content type, whether it's uh, HTML, JSON, whatever. Um, but this seems to mess things up. Um, so I'll just remove these. Technically this should work, but I found that I had to change something in the Python. Perhaps, um, 
perhaps it requires something extra if we want to use this headers and data section. Um, but this will work if we just go into the Python and then instead of using your request dot request, we just simply use your request dot get and then remove this back to where the quotation marks are on both sides. And then I'll just wipe this out here as well. This is not necessary. Okay. And then make sure. Yep, that should be good. Okay, and now we'll run that. And now let's go to the window where our setup is. And I'm going to open the window and let's see if it sends the notification. And there we have it. That's it for this week. Hope you enjoyed this lesson. Maybe you can think of some other uses combining M5 stack with the IFTT platform and other sensors. If you have any ideas, make sure to leave them down in the comments. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.